shapeless, faceless sim that's just a creepy gray void. That was weird, why did I do that? Hi, I'm Kayla, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for being here. I wanna preface this by saying that I love fan fiction. I have been reading fan fiction at the very least since before whole ass adults who are currently watching this video were even conceived, and I have been writing it for almost as long. Like, I have been writing fan fiction for so long that my first Jensen Ackles fandom was not supernatural. I'm talking like GeoCities web rings and Yahoo mailing lists. I have been doing this for a very long time, and I love it. This list is in no way intended to imply that fan fiction is bad or not worthwhile, or that you don't learn anything from reading it or writing it or enjoying it, or that you should stop doing any of those things. I think fanfiction is wonderful and I will eventually probably do one of these videos about the ways in which it has made me a better writer, but for the time being I just want to focus on the ways that it maybe has not served me personally. So is every fic going to be guilty of all of these things or even one of these things? No. But enough of them are that they had an impact on me. And I think we should just agree, you and I, to move into this with the acknowledgement that I am just speaking from my personal experience and I am not in any way coming for you or your love of fanfiction. So without any more hedging, five ways in which fanfiction really has not served me as an author. Number one is character descriptions. And I know what you're saying. You're saying, Kayla, characters get described in fanfiction all the fucking time. We all know just how much page space Draco Malfoy's cerulean orbs have taken up. And that is true. However, when you're describing a character in fanfiction, you don't need to do any of the introductory work of figuring out how to ease your audience into them. Your audience already knows what they look like. I don't have to tell you that Draco Malfoy's eyes are pools of limpid blue until someone is staring into them with longing. Which means every time I do mention a physical characteristic, it's a choice to highlight something. I'm not introducing anyone to it, I'm just highlighting it. And now that highlighting could be for fluffy reasons or feelsy reasons or horny reasons, but it's optional and not necessary. Which means that I write some really weird character introduction stuff. I either forget entirely to give my leads a corporeal form in any context until someone thinks about their cerulean orbs, or I in just insert this like awkward chunk of overly descriptive text, which has like a real ebony darkness dementia raven way vibe to it, which nobody wants. Number two is establishing dynamics. And that's an awful lot like describing characters. I'm gonna be honest, because again, it's one of those things that the canon kind of does for you. I don't go into a fan fiction without knowing that I like the dynamic between those two characters. So while I might have a lot of practice in expanding and exploring upon dynamics that I really like, I don't have a ton of practice building them from the ground up organically. I can just kind of ape off what someone else has already done. And I think that there's a lot of value in that, in the practice of how characters interact. But there's also a lot of value in learning how to make them earn it and how to do the foundational work of those dynamics, which I don't end up having a lot of practice doing. Because even if I'm writing some crack ship crossover pairing, Faith Lahane and Dean Winchester getting a couple thousand words in the back of the Impala don't really need a character dynamic. We're probably starting in media res, if not actually in media res. So I just don't have a lot of practice with it. Is anyone else noticing that this all kind of boils down to, I have a lot of practice writing, but very little practice actually building the story from the ground up, which makes me a kind of weird writer. We're just gonna let that slide right into number three, which is uh, descriptions in general. So is this kind of just the last two, but slightly different? Yes. And I also think it's more of a me problem than a general problem. I have this friend Porter who writes these like incredibly beautiful, lush, lived in worlds. I just wanna reach out and touch because they feel so real. So she clearly doesn't have this problem. But for me, I am not creating those touchably real worlds. I am creating, uh, not just white rooms, like white worlds. It's like fully the sanctuary in the Black Dagger Brotherhood. There is just nothing f***ing there. Until, you know, I take pity on you and mention that someone leaned against a counter and you're like, oh, f I guess we're in a kitchen. But it comes down to like, that's not what I write fan fiction for. You don't come to fan fiction for interior design. You come to fan fiction to feel shit, for emotional payoff. 
And for me, I have always deprioritized establishing scene because in my 3000 word feelsy fic for Stargate Atlantis, I don't need to establish the setting. You know that I'm in Atlantis and that's enough. But for a novel where no one knows where anything is, you actually have to give them a world. So number four is pacing, which I have already said is a real weakness for me. I find myself deep into act two, flirting with act three, and realize I've made some buck wild pacing choices and I have to go all the way back to act one and shuffle everything around to make it work. Which, unlike character descriptions or even character dynamics, is not the kind of edit that you can do with just a few good scenes like really worked on and some superficial sprinkling of it in throughout the work. You have to go back and rework whole acts and that can be a nightmare. I actually gave up on my previous project because of it. Before Kira I was writing a necromancy book and it was just oppressive to think about all of the work I would have to do to go back and make my pacing make some kind of traditional sense. And I'm not gonna say that it's all a fanfiction's fault, obviously it's my fault, but in fanfiction I got a lot of practice writing weird pacing beats because fans are quite happy to read 20 chapters of sort of aimless vignettes that don't really follow a structure but give you lots of indulgent emotional payoff for the characters that you love or alternately a 15,000 word dirty one shot that totally got away from the author and has no plot to speak of. Fans go to fanfiction because it is by nature supplemental so your canon is responsible for doing all of the character growth and like big world narratives. Now canon often f***s it up, but even when you're writing a fix-it fic you are bandaging it or reskinning it. You're not really rebuilding it from the ground up and it's not important that it has, you know, tight structure and perfect pacing, but with a traditionally published novel it probably should. I mean, if you pay for the privilege of reading my book, you probably want it to be vaguely story shaped and not just a couple tropes in a trench coat. Enemies to lovers and there's only one bed. So number five is probably the most difficult for me personally, and that's instant validation. There is nothing quite like the serotonin hit of getting a long rambly comment that quotes your work back at you and tells you that they hate you because you made them feel so much. Before I go any further, please let me say, Comment on fic you read. I don't care if your only comment is, hey, this was great. Your author will love that so fucking much. So over the years, I have kind of accidentally trained my brain to expect that rush of validation from someone else liking what I'm working on when I finish a chapter. And that's great when you're writing fan fiction because someone will tell you that they liked it. But when you're writing original fiction alone, by yourself, in your room, alone, um, you're the only one there to reassure yourself that what you're writing is good and worthwhile and that someone else will enjoy it. And that can be like a hard place to stay motivated in, at least for me. It's easy for me to get stuck in this like weird bad echo chamber of this isn't good, no one is ever gonna like it, I'm never gonna finish it, it's always gonna be terrible. And that's stupid and intellectually I know that that's stupid, but it's still that little tweak of support from other people and validation from other people at the end of a chapter or at the end of a little drabble really makes a difference. I mean, I can't be the only one who has completely abandoned a fic and then gotten a really, really good comment and been pulled right back into wanting to write it. But when you're doing original fic and no one is reading it, you have to be the one to do that. You have to be the one to tell yourself that it's good and worthwhile and that you need to go and work on the next chapter. So do I come with solutions? Hell no. Problems only here. Um, I don't know how to solve these problems and if I figure it out I will happily share that with you but for the time being this is just five ways fanfiction has not served me and there is nothing to do about it. You just gotta power through. Or I do. Do you have any of these problems? Do you have different problems that arose from fanfiction? Um, do you have solutions to these problems? Because if you have solutions to these problems I like really want to hear about it. Please leave a comment down below, suggestions, comments, complaints, whatever, you know what to do. Subscribe, like, do the good engagement stuff. If you were looking for me anywhere else, I am Kayla Amanda pretty much everywhere, and that is K-A-Y-L-U-G-H-M-A-N-D-A. -A -A. Until then, I will see you next time.